So here's how the algorithm works. It's so simple. It's called the P3 rule or V rule. OK, so, so the, the letter V in the English alphabet looks like this. So when you see a V, like A, B, and C, the B is the vertex in the bottom, and the A and the C are there. Whenever you have an induced P3, then if you're going to orient it transitively, you have to orient both edges towards B or both edges away from B. Again, you have to orient both edges towards B or you have to orient both edges away from B. Now, how complex is that? It's just trivial. Watch my hand waving. Here's a V. If I orient this edge towards B and this edge away from B, I have A to B and B to C. What does the transitive property require? It requires that there is an edge up here. Now, it also requires that that edge be oriented from A to C, but for starters, the edge has to be there. So when you have a V, there is no edge. It's an induced P3. An induced P3. So edge, edge, no edge. So when you have an induced P3, the two edges that join the center must be both oriented in or both oriented out. That simple. All right, so what's the algorithm? To understand the algorithm, let's do this exercise. Trace that graph, draw that graph on your notes. That one is simple enough that everybody can do it. Draw that graph on your notes. Six vertices. Then attempt to orient it transitively using the V rule. So that we all work together, let me make this suggestion. Take this graph, and let's all orient this edge right here, left to right. Now, use the V rule, or P3 rule, and see what that forces when you apply it repeatedly. If you're completely confused, Watch this one hint. See, this and this, that forms a P3. Because that edge is not present. So that should tell me something about that edge. Does this form a P3? No. That does not form a P3, not an induced one. The V rule or the P3 rule only applies to induced paths of size 3. So apply it here. Do not apply it there. If you know what you're doing, keep working. If you're confused, let's do it together. <clears throat> Again, 
This vertex, this vertex, and this vertex form an induced P3. One, two, three, but with no edge here. So both edges incident with this center point towards it or away from it. So I should put an arrowhead here, up or down? Up or down? Down. Okay, now look for another P3. How about this, this, and this? Does that form a P3? Is that edge present? No. So this, this, and this form a P3. That should tell me a direction on this edge. Which direction is it? Up. Okay, does that form a V? Yes, no? Yes, no. no. <laughs> induced P3s. Not P3s, induced P3s. One, two, three. Ah, but that, the one, three edge is present. That's not an induced P3. Doesn't, you can't use the V rule there. Okay. Now, do you see anything else where we have a P3? Oh, yeah, how about this and that? Does that form a P3? Yes, so what about that edge? Up or down? Up. Okay, what about this, this, and this? P3? So what direction is that? Down. All right, what about this, this? Yes, so what direction is that? All right, what about this and this? What direction is this? Up. What about this and this? Yes. yes. So what direction is this? Right. Left to right or right to left? Left to right. Right to left. Right to left. What about uh, this one and this one? They both have to point away from the center. All right, what about this and this? Yes. yes. So what direction on that edge? Left to right or right to left? Left to right. Well, I'm done. I forced all the edges. So the answer is yes. Isn't it? No. It's no. Somewhere up here in this picture, there is a P3 which is not labeled consistently. Find it. Somewhere in this picture, there is a P3 which is bad. You find it? Uh-huh. Might you be discussing this path? So we started with one edge, and from that edge we spawned out forces. But at some point, we forced a direction which violates the P3 rule. Now, on the first edge, we put a certain direction. I think it was left to right, wasn't it? How would this work have gone if I had put right to left? All the arrows would just be turned around. And this would still be a contradiction. It would just be a contradiction pointing that way. So this graph is not a comparability graph. So you could show this to the referee and walk the referee through the process. Listen to me, referee. Your first choice is arbitrary because the post head is going to look like this or this. Put a direction on it. Once you put that direction on, I'm going to walk you through a sequence of 10 forces using the V rule. 
The referee listens patiently, and you explain, this forces this, then this forces that, then this forces this, then this forces that, then this forces that. It's like playing chess. If I do this, you have to do this. If I do this, you have to do that, because you're forced. It's your only legal move. And then I walk you into a checkmate. I walk you into a situation where I've got a P3, which is improperly oriented. The referee listens patiently and then says, well, absolutely, you're right. You're right. That, that, you can't do that. So you have provided a certificate for your no answer. Now, if you did all these forces, and then you looked at all the P3s, and they're all transitively oriented, everything is fine, then you have a certificate for your yes answer. Right, and that, in a nutshell, is the algorithm. Now, let's state it a little more formally. 